So hi everyone and welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's session guys we are going to talk about the PIB news from 4th to 7th of October 2022. All right. And I hope your uh, Nabad grade A phase 2 preparations are going on and all the very best for the preparation. Now jitna bhi time bacha hai, usme answer writing ki practice and revision. These two things are very important guys. All right. So let's begin with the session without any delay. But before we begin, if you want to have the PDF of this session, you can join the uh, Telegram channel. The link is provided in the description. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me on Instagram and Telegram. This is my Instagram ID and Telegram ID Mashi Manish, right? M A S H Y M A N I S H is the ID. All right. So let's talk about the very first question, which says. Which of the following statements is incorrect about crop residue management scheme? So first of all, is that a new scheme? No, it is not a new scheme. So why it is in news? Why we are discussing about it? Because under this scheme, the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare headed by Mr. Narendra Singh Tomar has organized a farm demonstration on crop residue management, right? Uh, there was a farm demonstration on crop residue management, which took place under this scheme. And that is why it is in news. This Farm demonstration on crop residue management. This is not at all important for the examination that what has been done uh, in this farm demonstration, right? The important part is crop residue management scheme, right? So let's talk about the scheme guys. The objective of the scheme, it is clear from its name itself. It is for the management of crop residue. So under the scheme, the government is addressing air pollution, which is caused due to stubble burning and to subsidize the machinery which is required for management of crop residue right aap sabne suna hoga ki punjab mein haryana mein jab stubble burning hota hai to jiski wajah se bahut sara pollution october november ke time mein uh, delhi mein up mein ncr mein kafi jagahon pe aa jata hai right so to address this issue this scheme was launched in the year 2018-19 right when it was launched in the financial year 2019 by of course the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare right it is a central sector scheme, which means 100% funding is provided by the central government. Now, how they are supporting the farmers? First of all, for purchase of crop residue management machinery, 50% of the amount is provided to the farmers. So let's say the crop residue management machinery is of rupees 10,000, then 5,000 is given to the farmers, right? And 80% of the amount is provided to cooperative societies, FPOs and panchayas for establishment of custom hiring centers. Now, what is this custom hiring centers? Remember, these are the centers where farm machinery and equipments are available at rent, right? At rent. So at a minimal, at a minimum amount at, at a, you know, very less amount of rent, the farmers can avail the farm machinery, which are required, which is farm machineries, which are required for any farm related purpose, right? The scheme is operated, is being operated in Delhi, Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. And recently to promote the use of bio decomposer technology, the operational guidelines of the scheme were revised in month of August 2022. All right. So that is all about this scheme, guys. I hope this scheme is clear. One second. I think you guys. One second. Let me adjust this camera because. Yeah. All right. I hope. You can see everything now. All right. So now let's come back to the question. Okay. So it is a centrally sponsored scheme. Is that so? No, it is a central sector scheme. It was launched with effect from 2018-19. This is correct. And it targets to reduce air pollution caused due to civil burning in the areas of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, NCT, Delhi, Gujarat, mountain belts of Rajasthan and Uttarakhand. Is that so? See Gujarat, Uttarakhand and Rajasthan are not included. So this statement will be incorrect guys. All right. So the correct answer will be option D. 1 and 3 only because we have to identify the incorrect statement. All right. Moving ahead to question number 2. <clears throat> what is the full form of cities, which is a joint program being implemented by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, French Development Agency, European Union and National Institute of Urban Affairs. Right. So you just have to tell the full form of this particular uh, program. Now cities, this program is in news because under this program, a photography exhibition, which is titled as Cities of Tomorrow has been organized by National Institute of Urban Affairs. Now in this photography exhibition, there is nothing relevant for the examination. But yes, this cities is important. Now cities stands for cities investment to innovate, integrate and sustain 
and as the already as question says it is a joint program of ministry of housing and urban affairs french development agency european union and national institute of urban affairs this program was launched with an objective to develop and implement innovative and sustainable urban infrastructure projects right so basically this program is for urban infrastructure projects and it is currently being implemented in 12 smart cities across the country all right so that is all and you just have to identify the full form of cities so that cities investment to innovate uh, integrate and sustain option d will be the correct answer once again all right moving ahead to question number 3 which of the following program is not being executed by railway protection force so there are a lot of programs which are being implemented and executed by railway protection force so you have to identify which of the following is not so let me tell you the answer that's operation wheelchair so let's talk about uh, the different operations which are being implemented by railway protection force see yahan pe hum panch operations ke bare mein pad rahe hain because these are in the news these were in the uh, pib release but other than these operations there are various other operations as well which are being implemented by railway protection force so talking about these five operations number one is operation seva what happens under this operation is that rpf personnel provide assistance to the elderly citizens women physically disabled and provide them with amenities like wheelchairs stretchers medical help ambulance says infant food etc then we have operation dignity under this uh, rpf rescues the person who are lost or have uh, or ran away from their homes or disoriented due to certain reasons or distress or are in the need of care and protection then we have operation nan hai farishte in which rpf personnel undertakes rescue operation of children who are lost or run away or separated from their family due to any reason right then we have operation jeevan raksha under this rpf op uh, personnel look out for accidents during boarding or deboarding and then we have operation matr shakti which is for uh, you know helping the pregnant women passengers experiencing labor pain during their journey all right iske alawa we had we have operation ahat which is being implemented by uh, rpf which is for curb which is for curbing the uh, human trafficking right the cases of human trafficking jo ki railways ke through hota hai right then we have operation narcos which is of course to curb on the to you know make a dent on the illegal drugs right iske alawa we have operation sashakt operation operation sashakt sashakt is there operation sashakt is for uh, you know uh, for curbing the illegal tobacco right illegal tobacco so there are various other operations which are being implemented by uh, railway protection force and the correct answer to this question is option b operation wheel chair moving ahead to question number 3 which of the following is not a future of feature of emergency credit line guarantee scheme of course you all know that this scheme was launched in the year 2020 as a part of atmanirbhar bharat package and recently it has been extended up to march 2023 right now currently it is in news because the department of financial services has modified the scheme to give the civil aviation sector necessary collateral free liquidity at the reasonable interest rate right jo civil aviation sector hai उनको कोलेट्रल फ्री लिक्विडिटी प्रोवाइड कराने के लिए देर आर सम मॉडिफिकेशन अंडर दिस स्कीम विच हैव बीन डन बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज नाउ व्हाट इज दिस मॉडिफिकेशन बेसिकली सो मॉडिफिकेशन इज दिस सो द मैक्सिमम लोन अमाउंट व्हिच इज गिवन टू द सिविल एविएशन सेक्टर हैज बीन एनहांस्ड टू 100% ऑफ देयर फंड बेस्ड और नॉन फंड बेस्ड लोन राइट लेट्स से एनी एनी यू नो कंपनी इन सिविल एविएशन सेक्टर हैज टेकन अ लोन ऑफ लेट्स से हंड्रेड करोड़ राइट सौ करोड़ का लोन लिया है सो दिस मच अमाउंट ऑफ लोन कैन नाउ बी टेकन अंडर द ई सी एल जी एस राइट और रुपीज फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड करोड़ विच एवर इज लेस राइट सो दो कंडीशन है हंड्रेड परसेंट ऑफ फंड बेस्ड और नॉन फंड बेस्ड लोन और फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड करोड़ इन दोनों में से जो कम होगा दैट विल बी गिवन अंडर ई सी एल जी एस सो दैट इज द मोडिफिकेशन दैट हैज बिन डन बाई डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज और राइट एंड नाउ since it is a news let's talk about it remember it was launched in 2020 as part of the atmanirbhar bharat package and the objective is to support small business uh, who are struggling to meet their operational liabilities due to imposition of of course covid 19 lockdown jo laga tha us time jo kai sare business the hamare wo uh, khatre mein aa gaye the 
तो उनके लिए दिस स्कीम वॉज लॉन्च एंड अंडर द स्कीम हंड्रेड परसेंट गारंटी इज प्रोवाइडेड बाय द नेशनल क्रेडिट गारंटी ट्रस्टी कंपनी टू मेंबर लेंडिंग इंस्टीट्यूशन विच आर बैंक फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन एंड एन बी एफ सी राइट नाउ इन दर्स्ट एडिशन इन द फर्स्ट एडिशन द गवर्नमेंट हैज प्रोवाइडेड कोलेट्रल फ्री एडिशनल क्रेडिट टू वेरियस एंटिटीज लाइक एम एस एम ईज बिजनेस एंटरप्राइजेज मुद्रा बरोवर्स एंड इंडिविजुअल लोन्स फॉर बिजनेस पर्पजेस टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ 20% of their outstanding credit as on 29 February 2020 and MSMEs with up to 25 crore outstanding and rupees 100 crore turnovers were eligible in the first edition of ECL GS what happened in second edition so in the second edition 26 stressed sectors were identified by kamath committee and they were provided with the benefits and these <coughs> stressed sectors 26 stressed sectors were those which have outstanding of more than rupees 50 crores and up to rupees 500 crores as on 29 february 2020 then there was ecl gs third edition which involved extending credit up to 40% of total credit outstanding across all lending institution as on 29 february the tenor was 6 years with a moratorium of 2 years and it has covered business enterprises in hospitality travel and tourism leisure and sporting sectors and the total credit outstanding should not exceed rupees 500 crores under ecl gs 3.0 right and finally we are uh, implementing ecl gs 4.0 as well under which a 100% guarantee is provided to cover loans up to rupees 2 crores to hospitals nursing homes clinics medical colleges for setting up of on site oxygen generation uh, plants so hum sabne dekha tha that इन द सेकेंड फेज ऑफ कोविड ऑक्सीजन की कितनी ज्यादा कमी हो गई थी सो टू टैकल दिस सिचुएशन ईसीएल जी एस फोर्थ एडिशन वॉज लॉन्च अंडर विच लोन कवर ऑफ अप टू रुपीज टू करोर वॉज प्रोवाइडेड विद एन इंटरेस्ट रेट विच वॉज कैप डेट सेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट और राइट सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट दिस न्यूज एंड नाउ लेट्स कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन सो वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट अ फीचर it aims to provide fully guaranteed and collateral free additional credit to msmes correct absolutely correct it was recently extended to new sectors including hospitality travel and tourism ye bhi sahi hai ecl gs 2.0 entities were in 26 stressed sector identified by narsimhan committee no that was not narsimhan committee that was kamath committee right so the correct answer will be by what guys option c and now let's talk about question number 4 uh i think there is some okay question number 5 all right consider the following statements with respect to asia pacific broadcasting union and you have to identify the incorrect statement so guys we have seen in the examination that questions from international and regional organizations have been asked right international re regional organizations se question aa aa jata hai so that is why i have taken this question but the question first of all is why we are discussing about asia pacific broadcasting union because recently a global news forum global news forum has taken place in new delhi and it took place under the aegis of asia pacific broadcasting union and that is why we are discussing it so let's talk about this asia pacific broadcasting union so remember it is a non profit non governmental non political and professional association to assist the development of broadcasting of course iske naam se hi clear hai organizations in the asia pacific region it was established in the year 1964 with its headquarters at kuala lumpur in malaysia its mandate is to promote collective interest of television and radio broadcasters as well as the other stakeholders and international media cooperation for members currently <clears throat> it has membership of 253 broadcasting organization from 67 countries reaching more than 2 billion audiences and from india Doordarshan and All India Radio are full members of this organization. AIR was is the founding member since uh, AIR is the founding member of this organization. By Doordarshan joined this organization in the year 1976. All right. So that is all about this news. And now let's come back to the question. You have to identify the incorrect statement. It is the world's biggest broadcasting union with 253 broadcasting organizations. This is correct. No problem with this. It was established in 2000. No, that was 1964, and it is headquartered in Manila, Philippines. No, it is headquartered in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. So second and third are incorrect, which means option C will be the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number six, 
Power Foundation of India in association with which of the following organization is running a campaign to create awareness on Agni Tattva under life, which is lifestyle for environment. You have to fill this gap, right? So there is a uh, awareness generation program, which is uh, being run by Power Foundation of India in association with Vijnan Bharti. And the name of the campaign is Agni Tattva. What is Agni Tattva, by the way? Agni Tattva means fire element. And it is one of the elements, one of the five elements of life. So as it is said that five, life is consists of five elements, which are uh, Agni, Vayu, uh, Agni, Vayu, Akash, Jal, and one more, which I am forgetting. So fire is basically one of the five elements of life. So to create awareness about this element, to create awareness about this element, this campaign, Agni Tattva campaign uh, is being conducted by Power Foundation of India in association with Vijnan Bharti, right? Th it is in news because very recently the first conference of this campaign was organized in Leh on the theme of sustainability and culture, right? And remember, it is an initiative under the umbrella campaign of Sumangalam of the Ministry of Power and Renewable Energy, right? And this Agni Tattva campaign was launched in the month of September last month. 2022. All right, so that is all. This is not the case. So the correct answer is option B, Vijnan Bharti, or you can say Vijnan Bharti as well. Moving ahead to question number seven. National Mission for Clean Ganga and Sahakar Bharti have organized Vishal Kisan Samelan workshop as part of the targeted campaign under Namami Ganga program and Earth Ganga to promote natural farming amongst the farmers in Ganga Basin. In which state the Sammelan was organized? Very simple and very straightforward question. So remember it was organized under Namami Ganga program and Earth Ganga program by National Mission for Clean Ganga in Sahakar Bharti in Haryana, right? Option E in Sonipat district of Haryana. There is a Sonipat district in Haryana. There it was organized. Question number eight, a committee of experts on sustainable finance constituted by International Financial Services Centers Authority has submitted its final report. The, more, the, the main focus areas of the committee were directed towards aligning the IFSC regulations with the international best practices, exploring ways in which capital flows through IFSC can be enhanced, and also to support development of innovative financial products in the area of green and sustainable finance. Who was the chairperson of this committee? So, all these things were the wastage of time. So, in this way, the question is in the exam that you have to give a lot of information just to waste your time, right? So, you have to read the first line and then you have to read the last line. So, the chairperson of this committee was Mr. C.K. Mishra. Option D is the correct answer. Question number 9. International Electrotechnical Commission is a non-profit organization developing international standards in the field of electrical and electronics. Where are the headquarters of IEC? So we are discussing it because recently there was a partnership between this organization and Bureau of Indian Standards. Now that partnership is not very important for us. So that is why I have taken this question only. Remember the headquarters of IEC are in Geneva. Option A is the correct answer. Question number 10. All India Institute of Ayurveda has signed an MOU with National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology of which country to promote Research collaboration and building capacities in the field of Indian Ayurvedic system of traditional medicines. Right? You just have to tell uh, where in which country this organization is located. So this is located in Japan. Option E is the correct answer. Question number 11. Which organization has launched the India Mobile Congress 2022 where Modi ji has launched the 5G services in India along with Department of Telecommunication. So remember it was launched by Cellular Operators Association of India, right? It was, it was a joint effort of Department of Telecommunication and Cellular Operators Association of India. Question number 12, very, very important question. Which of the following statements is incorrect about sugar production in India? So recently we have surpassed USA and now we are the biggest producer and consumer of sugar in the world. So India has become the largest sugar producer in the world after surpassing Brazil. That's not Brazil, that's USA. Now India is the second largest exporter of sugar. This is correct. And Maharashtra has recently become the highest sugar producing state in India, surpassing Uttar Pradesh. So third is also correct, which means 
बट वी हैव टू आइडेंटिफाई द इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट ओनली विच मीन ऑप्शन ए ओनली वन विल बी द करेक्ट आंसर क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टीन वट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ स्वीप विच इज अ फ्लैगशिप प्रोग्राम ऑफ इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया फॉर वोटर एजुकेशन विच वॉज स्टार्टेड इन दर टू थाउजेंड एंड नाइनटीन एंड ऑफकोर्स चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर इज मिस्टर राजीव कुमार राजीव कुमार राइट सो स्वीप स्टैंड फॉर सिस्टमैटिक वोटर्स एजुकेशन एंड इलेक्टोरल पार्टिसिपेशन ऑप्शन ए इज द करेक्ट आंसर एंड द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर टूडे क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन विद विच ऑफ दॉलोइंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड फार्मर्स वेलफेयर has signed an mou for promoting millets as part of initiatives for celebration of the international year of millets 2023 now this mou has been signed between department of agriculture and farmers welfare and nafed option b is the correct answer all right guys so that's it for today's session i hope all the questions and their explanations are clear if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section thank you so much for watching goodbye take care and god bless